Hi, everybody. I just want to give you a little bit of a heads up. First of all, I want to apologize for the fact that this video is so late. I've had a fiasco of Murphy's Law things going on in my life. Um, some things I wrote on Facebook, so check out my Facebook uh, you know, link below and check out what's been going on. It's been a little crazy, but I'm finally getting this last thing uh, redone. I have to redo this uh, part of the video again because um, my computer decided to eat it. I didn't have internet for 48 hours. Um, yeah, things have been absolutely crazy. So I'm hoping that I can get this all resolved for you and get going. So on with the tutorial and uh, hope you enjoy watching this. Take care. <music> Hi and welcome to Manny's Makings. Uh, I'm excited. To, we have I have hit over 2,000 subscribers, and I'm super excited. And I want to continue to bring you a combination of seed bead work and wire work and embroidery and all kinds of other things. I'm getting some requests from you, and I'm so excited about that. So thank you for all you return uh, subscribers, um, and those of you who have not subscribed yet please feel free to click that little button that you see right down in here on the screen and subscribe. It won't take you away from the channel, which is like super awesome. Um, or click below that. And the other bit of housekeeping is a couple of things. One, I have a Patreon page now, so uh, I would really appreciate uh, your support. I know that there's been a fair amount of, of um, struggle with the focus issues sometimes with the camera that I have. I'm using a webcam. It's the best that I can afford. So I'm trying to um, put some money together to be able to afford a better camera so I can bring you better shot videos. Uh, I can't afford to do that on my own right now. So uh, if you'd like to support my uh, crafty endeavors and uh, learn more from me, uh, you know, feel free to go over and as for as little as two dollars a month you can help support me on Patreon and I would really appreciate that. All of those dollars will go towards purchasing another camera that will actually function and they're quite expensive. Uh, I'm looking anywhere from seven to fourteen hundred dollars so it's a lot of money. So a little, every little bit helps. It's two bucks a month is, uh, you know, less than a cup of coffee. So I'd appreciate that. Number two is that uh, please feel free to friend me on Facebook. I would really appreciate that. Uh, it's a personal page, but I only use it for this uh, for this YouTube channel. And um, you can come on over, and if you friend me, you're more than welcome to post on my page. I appreciate that. Um, you'll see other people's postings there, as well as my postings and any updates or any information you may need to do with videos and what's going on. And number three is that uh, always in all my videos. Below the show more button is always a list of all of the materials I use in any given video. I always put them all there so you can always find them. Um, if I know what company I got them from, I put it down there. Um, at least with the more recent videos, I'm getting really good at that. I don't have a direct link, but I do have, a, you know, where I got stuff from. So today we're going to play with this Celtic stone piece. There's lots of different things that you can do with something like this, but I wanted to see what would happen if I encased it and turned it into a pendant. And I'm thinking I'd like a nice beaded rope to go through that and it would uh, turn it into a really nice piece. It would protect the stone um, and would be some fun. So all the beads I got today, all of these, uh, these are mini duos. These are 11 O's. Um, and I have one more package of 11 O's over here. All of these are from EurekaCrystalBeads.com. This uh, piece here, I got two of these and two in purple. And these are from um, BeadShop.com. So if you're looking for them, that's where you can find all of those beads. So let's get started. So this uh, one here, I encased both sides with the exact same color and I thought it would be fun to do one that was reversible. So it would have one color on one side, one color on the other side, and I could put both colors in the chain. So I thought about cream and sort of this, it's a, uh, what do you call it? It's a multi-toned, um, it's a Picasso finish, a blue turquoise a silver Picasso finish on um, these mini duos. So I'm going to do one side in this color, one side in this color, and we're going to get started. So get all your materials together. 
The reason I'm showing you this is because there's lots of videos out there to show you how to encase something that's round or oval, but this is a square piece. So I'm going to show you how to work out a square piece and how to figure out your spacing. So you could use this on a resin piece. You could use it on a found stone that's more square. Um, you know, you could use it on odd shape uh, pieces um, that would be able to be encased inside of this little sort of like a little photo pocket I don't know what you want to call it so that's something else you could do too is just uh, put a couple of photos in back to back with some clear plastic and put them inside and you'd have like a little photo piece there's lots of possibilities of what you could do with this so um, get your stuff together and we'll get going okay so we're ready to get going and I am going to uh, use um, one color of my 11 O's let's see which color I want for the center I think I'll do the center darker. So I'll move these ones out of the way. And then I'll move everything else out of the way so that my focus isn't as bad. So, and I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so I have um, some of my 11 O's. I'm using the dark ones, and these ones are the uh, number 78 DF Teal Matte Toho Round Sea Beats. And then I'm using my mini duos, as I said earlier, in the blue turquoise silver Picasso. So I'm going to um, pick up 11 o and then one end of my mini duo, 11 o a mini duo, 11 o a mini duo, 11 o and a mini duo. So this is what I have so far. So I have four of them. And then I want to do a corner. Now, how do you figure out how many you need? Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. So here's my piece. And I need enough that this section, whoop, I'm missing an 11 oh Let me get that on there. I'm going to talk about spacing. I need the right amount of things. So I have 11 on the beginning and start of each one. So you can see if I can get it to go on the needle, here we go. You can see that the spacing sits almost to the corner and almost to the corner. So I don't, if I want, if I cover it up that much, that's as all the stone would show. So if I had less beads, it would go towards the center more. I want it to stay fairly close to the edge. So that spacing works for me. Now depend, this is a one inch by one inch square. Um, it depends on your spacing. So, and then I need three for the corner. And the reason I'm doing three for the corner, if, you, if you've ever done any fiber arts and you've done crochet, when you do a corner of crochet, you do a double crochet, chain two, double or chain one, or chain three, and a double crochet. And that makes your turn your corner. So I'm putting three together. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to do a, a 11 0, a mini, 11 0, a mini. 11 0, a mini, 11 0, a mini. That's four. I need one more 11 0. So I have four of these between each set of the three in the corner. So this is what I have so far. Cool, huh? So now I have to continue. So I need to do another set of the three, another set of four another set of the three, another set of four, and then the final set of three so that I have four corners. So I'm just going to continue adding the beads and I'll come, I'll come back when I have them all on my needle. Okay, so this is what I have on my needle. I have one, two, three, four, with separated by 11 oh. Then I have the three together. Then I have one, two, one, two, three, four, separated by 11 oh's, three together. So there's my third side, three together, my fourth side, three, and then that comes around here. So when I take this and I turn it into a circle, so I just take it, turn it into a circle. Okay. I can see the size it's going to be. So when I go like this, 
Well, this let me put it through a couple of beads. I'll put it back out. That's fine. So when you're trying to figure this out, I'm just going to go through a couple of beads. I'm holding onto the tail. So I've turned it into a circle. Now remember, the beads aren't all laying where they need to be, so that's fine. So this is a corner. This is a you know we can flip them out a little bit so that they lay a little bit better. If I pull it tight, they're all going to flip back in again. So this gives you an idea at this point if it's going to. Of course, I pull the thread and flip all my beads back again. See, Murphy's Law applies to everybody, not just you. <laughs> okay. So if I look at this, I can see that, you know, once this is tightened up, this is basically the same size as the piece that I'm working on. It's just a little bit bigger, which is perfect, because once I tighten everything up and everything's nice and tight, you can see if I put it over top of here, tighten it all up here funny. It's not sitting the way I want it to but it'll give you an idea. When I tighten it all up you can see that it kind of fits but it's not too big it's not gonna go over top. Okay so you know definitely that will help. So now I'm gonna back back out again and I'm gonna tie it on in the end. So I was just checking my spacing. So you can do the same thing. Don't hesitate to do that. I'm just bringing my thread. I can do a, another pass. I can pass if I wanted and go all the way around. But in this case, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to tie it into a knot. So I'm going to move that out of the way. So I'm just going to come around, tie it into a knot. And then I'm going to go through here twice. Once. Twice. And make sure it goes down through the same spot in the beads and doesn't catch anything funny. So now I have this funky looking piece. Right? Now watch what's going to happen. So now that everything's tied in, I'm just tucking my tail out of the way. Now I'm sitting in a funny place uh, right by my knot. So I'm just going to take this through a few of these beads to get away from my knot. See, the knot just came undone a little bit and I don't like that so let's tighten it up and I'm going to tie another knot. I'll have to weave this tail in back through which is fine. So I'm just moving away. I'm just working through the same beads I was already on and I'm just going through all the beads and working away from my where my knot is. Okay, so now I need to step up. So the easiest way for me to step up is to come out of this hole. I can come up back up to the top hole here. So I'm just going to come up to the top hole. Okay, so the easiest way for me to step up is come up to the top hole here. So I come up to this top hole here. So I came out of the bottom hole here and I came around through the top hole. I'm going to flip my work because it does, there is no really wrong side or right side. Get my tail out of the way. I'm going to hold on to it. And I'm going to pick up a mini duel and I'm going to go from one mini duel to the next mini duel. And I'm going to do this all the way around, even in the corners. I put one between each one. And I think I have a, a block mini duel, even though I checked. Let me double check. Something's going on here. Never had one of those days where it's a comedy of errors. I actually already made this video once and I was short some beads. Like three beads, three super duos short. So I had to start again and it looks like I have a jammed super duo. Okay, let me unjam this sucker. Okay. Okay, so I jam that hole and I'm moving on. So I'm just going to put one between each one.
I'm going all the way around. See, I'm literally putting one between each one. And I know right now it looks like a circle, right? It's going to turn into a square. You'd be amazed. So I'm just going through top hole, picking up a mini duo. It doesn't matter which end you pick it up from. There's no wrong or right side on these suckers. So nice to work with. And I like the variegated color of these. It adds a lot of depth. And I did look through that hole. It was partly blocked, so just so you know. Okay, so I'm going to keep continue going. And when I get to the uh, end, before I have to finish, I'll show you how to step up. So as you can see, as I went around, just by putting one between each one, it turned it into a square. Isn't that cool? Um, and so, you know, if you wanted a five-sided piece and you had five, cor five corners, it would turn it into a five-sided piece, a six-sided piece. So, um, you know, a nice ceramic uh, cab inside of here. Awesome. So I'm going to just go through the last one on that bottom row and then through the bottom of the of the one, first one I added. So you can see this is where I'm coming through. This is where I'm coming through. Oop. Trying to catch on everything. So I have everything on that I need to that point. So I'm going to yeah I'll just I'll just go back up this way. It doesn't really matter. So you can choose to as you can see it's pretty flimsy. I just tightened it a little bit there. If you see when I put I came back. Okay. So as you can see I came back this way. I I was coming through this way. I took my th my needle and came back up through the top, so I'm at the top side, and I'm going to just flip it over because I like to work upwards. As I said, there's no real wrong or right side to this at this point. And now I need to do the other color. So I'm going to do this color, uh, which is, let me see the name of it. This is uh, a two, 264 2604F turquoise semi glaze to hold around. So if you're looking for the exact color, this is the color it is. And because this is this is going to be the outside that's going to transition to my other side, I'm making it a neutral color that will go with both sides. So and I'm just going to put one um, between each one on the side on the straight sides. And I'm going to explain the difference in two seconds get to the corner. Okay so there's a straight side and I want to take a look. Here is the three I put in the corner together on my first round. Remember those three I put together? So when I get to the place where I'm putting seed beads on top of the space where the three are in the corner I'm going to put two, two and two and then I'm going to put one on each of these then I get it when I have three back in the corner again. I'm going to put two, two, and two. So I'm just going to put two now. So, so I'm going to put two, two, and two. And I'm using eight pound fire line uh, in the color is it? This is the smoke. Yep. So eight, in the smoke color right? in eight pound I'm using heavier pounds so I don't have to do as many passes. So now I'm back to doing one and I'm using it size 10 beading needle and all 11 OC beads and mini duos. One of the things that um, I struggle when I like see other people's videos and stuff is they always want like four different types of beads and you know this all could be done in one color. You could get one color seed beads, one color mini duos and do the whole thing in the same thing. So you know for those of you who are on a budget and need to watch your dollars this is a good project for you.
as I said, you can put just about anything. You can create your own little um, pieces so that you could cover. So I'm above the corner, so there's the one, there's the one, two, three. So I need two above each one of those spots. So I, there's my two, two, and two, and then it's back to one again. I'm just going to keep doing this till I get all the way around and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I'm back to the last. I need to add two on this one because that's part of the corner and bring my, I'm just bringing my thread through a few more beads past that. It doesn't really matter how many. Okay, so at this point I have one side done. Pretty cool, huh? So this is what it's going to look like on top of the stone. As you can see, it goes just to the holes and, it, and you can see the holes are right near the outside. So there's your one frame and now I have to make the other frame. So the other frame, I'm going to do exactly the same as I did this frame. Now I'm going to work my thread through back to the center. I'm going to and reinforce my center. Um, I'm not going to reinforce this row because I need some space in it. I may work through the middle of these beads to reinforce, but you don't want it so tight that it's stiff because it does need to bend around. It has to bend a little. See how this goes around like this? So you, it, it'll bend. And if you make it too stiff, it won't bend. So you need to be able to bend just a little bit to go around the edge. Okay, so I'm going to make the other one in cream and um, with the cream one I'm just going to use the cream beads in between on the right side and like I did the darker teal here I'm going to use cream on the other side here in the center and then I'm going to get ready. I'm going to do it all the way to the stage before I add the seed beads and then I'll come back here and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're in part three. Um, I've gotten this piece uh, taken care of. So I'm ready now to attach this to the other piece to be able to put my stone in the middle. So I'm taking the two pieces and putting them together. And let's see if I can bring this in and get it to focus. I'll be right back. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna I'm coming out of the top bead. Remember I said not to put the last uh, set of beads in between. Um, I'm actually going to flip this so this is in the front. So this is the one that we originally did. It's all finished off. And I have the white one. So I'm coming out of the top bead of the white one. So I've brought my thread around the back here and I brought it up to the top. So I'm going to be working this way. So let's, I'm going to flip it one more time. There we go. So this is on the top and I'm working my way up. So my thread's wrapped around here and I'm working my way up this way. And I am on the straight side. See these three beads in the corner? That's the corner beads. And I'm right above this bead here. That's where my thread's coming out. Right above this bead here. And normally I would put a seed bead in there, but I'm going to attach it to the seed bead here. So what I want to do is look for the three beads in the corner on this one. So the three of them are right there. And this is my first one and there's the seed bead there. So I need to put I need to put it into my seed bead there and bring it here. So I have the first seed bead section where I need it. Then I'm going to go back to the white, white one through the top of the white one. And it's like zippering it up and it's going to want to get caught on the corners like it just did there. There we go. And then I'm going to come back across to this one and go through the second seed bead on the side, the single one. And I'm going to pull. And you're going to see as I do this, as I'm zipping these up together, is basically what we're doing. So I'm coming out of that one. I'm going to the next white one. White mini duo sticking up. Back to this side. And then back to the mini duo. And back to this side. And back to the mini duo. Now this is the place you need to check. So yeah, I've got the two beads here, which means I've hit a corner. This is it's the two beads are right above one of the corner beads, which is the three in the corner here. So I want to check on the other side. At, am I going to be putting those two beads above a corner bead? These are my three corner beads. So yes, 
on my my needles my threads coming right out of this white bead here see so I'm going to be right above a corner bead so I'm matching up perfectly and I want to make sure I match up perfectly because if I don't the whole thing is going to be cattywampus and not work very well so there we go so now I'm going to take it and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to pull my thread I'm going to take my needle out of my hand and I'm just going to pull the thread really tight and what it's going to do is stiffen this whole thing up but it's going to see how those beads are pulled in between the two sets so now I'm going to bring it back down but see how it doesn't it doesn't I could make it lay flat now but I don't want it it's creating a little bit of height and depth okay I'm going to go through the next one next white bead just one and then I'm going to go through the two beads over here and then the white one so those of you who ever zippered up peyote before are familiar with doing this kind of thing where you're going back and forth from one side to the other okay so that was my last of my corner ones so I'm going to stick my finger in the corner because what will happen is this I don't know if you can see this is starting to cup so when I pull I want this to pull tight and be cupped nice okay and it'll cause the other side to cup too so I'm out here so now I'm back to the single ones if I can get my needle to cooperate there we go and I'm just going back and forth one white one top of the mini duel over to the seed bead that's already on this piece here just the seed bead and then back over to the white one and then back over to the seed bead and I'm going to continue to do this pulling every time I get to the end of a straight side and every time I get to the end of a corner I'm going to do this around three sides so this is one side done already I'm on my second side is almost done I'm going to get to this corner right here just past these two seed beads I'll go into the the last one here before I would do the corner and pull it really tight and then I'm ready to, I'm going to have just an opening left like you know when you have a pillowcase I'm going to have an opening left to slide in the piece so I'll come back when I get all of the rest of this zipped up Okay, so I'm back and this is what I have and as you can see it it's pretty stiff and it has the three sides are zipped up like a little pillowcase or a little case so now you can see how this would easily fit a resin piece or something else in it and now we need to take the stone and we need to put the stone slip the stone in the top where this well there's still space and then we need to continue to zip up around the edge pulling tight as we go and this is really important tension is really important here you want these beads these blue ones here to try to move almost to the center and it stacks these other beads on top of uh, the mini duels on top of each other so so I'm just zipping it up gonna pull a little bit make sure that that corner is good and tight and as you can see that piece is not really moving too much in there right now and it's not even fully zipped yet make sure that's tight enough it's really hard to go back and tighten it I can go back around another time through doing the zipping again um, to add a second thread in here if I want to stiffen it up even more um, and you're more than welcome to do that so if you're finding your pieces uh, loose I'm a pretty um, tight beater so if you're finding your beading loose um, definitely go through it a second time tension is one of the biggest uh, issues that new seed beaters or new bead uh, weaving people have is creating enough tension and being afraid when they're creating tension that it's too much or too little and you have to do both yeah, sometimes you have to be light-handed sometimes you have to be heavy-handed and knowing which you have to be when and how is crucial so that was my last one there so I'm going to go through those two beads 
and I'm back to where he started. So let's give this a pull again. So this tightens it right up and it's tightened right on this. So you have this side, which is really lacy looking and kind of fun. And then you have this side. So you have the two options. So now I'm just going to work my way to the corner here and then we are going to put on the bail. Now, if you want to reinforce, I don't feel like I need to. This was going. Yep, yeah, I'm over here. So now I, I still have to see. I'm looking to see where I am. This one goes next. So now this has already been stitched. So I'm restitching over an area that I've already stitched. It's a little harder to do to get your needle in. And see how I have to, I'm tilting my piece and wiggling it around, trying to find a way to get my needle, there we go, to come out with um, just through the bead, through the seed bead and not a bunch of other stuff. Through the duo by itself, there we go. So I'll be back when I get to the corner. I'm working my way up till my, I get to this corner and then we can start the bail. Okay, so we're ready to do the bail and how the bail works is I'm going to use square stitch to make a strip and then make the strip come back around the other side. So let me show you with this one. So I'm making a strip that's coming from the one side and I'm just going to be a long strip and then I'm going to come back and attach and there's 14 um, rounds of square stitch that I'm going to use. I'm not going to count the first one here. I'm just going to count the ones on the actual bail. And then I'm going to reattach it to that first one there so it sits in the middle and this will allow me to put a beaded rope which I hope to have a video out in a few days um, on the beaded rope whatever I decide I'm not sure what I'm going to do which one I may do an old one I haven't done in a long time so um, yep so this is what the original prototype sort of looked like and now I'm doing one with two colors which I really 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 love so that presents a problem from this side I want it to be blue and from this side I want it to be white so if it's hanging like this it'll be white showing so we're going to start and we're going to start with the blue we're going to pick up two beads now I've done other videos that included square stitch so if you haven't seen them um, go check out those other videos I'll put a link up at the top here so I got the two beads my thread is coming out here and I'm going to come back up through the two beads from the opposite side. So I'm playing, I call it ring around the rosy. So I'm going all the way around like a big circle. And that's going to cause those two beads to want to sit right beside it. Then I'm going to come back down those two beads, just like that. And then I'm going to come back up the first set of beads, like that. And I'm going to come back down the second set of beads. So I've, I'm reinforcing this. Uh, quite a bit and the reason being is because I want it to be nice and sturdy you can just give it a pull hold on to the beads give it a pull because this is where there's going to be lots of um, the weight of the pendant moving around and swinging on the on on the actual bale is gonna that's where the most wear and tear is going to be on the project so you want to make sure you're good and secure there so that's one set so let me grab another set I need two more beads should probably move these beads where I can actually reach them so I'm ready for the second one so again I'm coming out of the bottom so I have to go to the top so I'm playing ring around the rosy I'm sort of like a cat chasing its tail or a dog chasing its tail so I'm just going around and around so I'm going to go back up through the two I'm going to put my thumb over top to hold it to hold it tight there we go so I can get my tension good come back down through the row below and then through the two new beads I just added back up through them again to set up for the next one so as you see I just put my thumb over it and pull and that way it keeps them nice and square and it keeps them from getting all wonky so I'm going to continue to do this I'm going to put I'm not counting this one I'm going to do one two so that's one row that's two rows see other I'm going to have seven of them and when I get to seven I'm going to switch to white and do seven of the white and I'm going to have a long strip and I'll come back and show you um, when I get near the end what it looks like okay so I have the seven uh, so I have if I don't count this one here I have one two three four five six seven and then one two three four five six seven and as you can see this is incredibly strong it's uh, one of the square stitch because of the amount of passes that you put through 
your of thread through your beads is one of the most the strongest stitches you can do as far as um, you know you can really do a lot of damage with it it's a perfect stitch for a ring as you can see it would make a wonderful ring um, you know a band so you can use it for a ring it's, it's really tough and holds up so now that I have them all there I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna find those two beads See if I can get this in focus there we go the two beads that I originally started with which is the two here so that's the two that's between the two um, you can see the dual here and the dual here so I'm just putting there we go if my needle will behave there we go I'm gonna put it back through here so that I almost did a wrong I want you to see this see my threads coming out this side here if I put it through this side here I'm gonna have it twisted I need to put it through the other side so let's flip it this way so my threads on this side I need to go through the same side on that row which is the very bottom row not the, of the ones you added but the ones from the original going around encasement see it's the very bottom row okay and when you do that just flip that so the white comes to the front and you can see it's going to make it go funky to the one side because I still have to come back down through those two first beads and I usually need to hold on to those I'm going to move it around so I can hold on to that flap there we go to go back through those two beads Ta -da. and now I can take it and put it through these first two beads again and I'm just moving them around so I can see those first two beads again and I have this attached now I'm going to do it one more time I'm going to come around these two beads I'm on this side so I'm going to come around these two beads and then back up through these two beads so I probably put about eight passes of thread through those first two seed beads so you know I'm using a size 10 needle and I'm good but if you're struggling um, go down to a smaller size needle so now I just need to work my thread away and um, tie it in a knot if I want to I, you can tie knots in between these super duos so if I wanted to I could take it bring it into the super duo it's right beside it and I could bring it down this super duo if I want it here and then through see if I can get it through one so those of you who like knotting you can take it and then see how there's a thread bridge between the two that I just grabbed a hold of so I'm just going to grab a hold of that thread bridge try not to pull it all the way through which I think I just did yep because I was watching my camera so let's pull it through again <laughs> there we go make a knot pull and tie and then you can from there you can go and you know follow the your bead path so there's a couple through there and then I can bring it through these couple maybe or one let's see what I can get it through and this gets really tight and it's all angles so you have to sort of play with it so I'm leaving this in even though I'm struggling it to get it through those holes because I want you to see this because I want you to know you are not alone in the struggle to get things through holes there we go got it through one so everybody struggles even people who've done this for a long time struggle you are not alone just be patient wiggle your needle you know sometimes it'll wiggle itself try a different angle because sometimes you can get up and over something that you couldn't get up and over on the other side so I can see the needle coming out there but it won't go past that let's try this way can't get it that way let's just try a knot at this point I came out this side if I want to I actually can drop to the bottom row so let's drop to the bottom row let's figure it out you can see I'm doing a lot of wiggling and it doesn't want to go anywhere
and I don't want to break any of my beads. So there we go. I got it in. See, patience. <laughs> I'm going to do one more knot in this area. There we go, through the loop, and pull. Hmm. There, I got it back up to the top. And back up through these beads here. And I'm going to end my thread there, right on the edge, right near the bale. I'm just taking my needle off. I'm cutting it. I used to just use pressure and I never have to burn it down or do anything. So I have my piece that looks like this on one side and looks like this on the other side and I'm really happy with it. My piece is in good. It's not going anywhere and it's going to make a wonderful gift for a young lady for Chris this Christmas and I'm excited. Um, I think she's going to really like it. She likes yeah, she loves these colors and she is younger, so she doesn't want anything like old fashioned old lady stuff. So um, come back for the next video should be out in the next three days. So hopefully by Sunday we'll have another video. Um, sorry about life getting so crazy. Uh, this is the this piece that you saw me where I put the two pieces together uh, disappeared on my video once I had edited it and was ready to upload it to YouTube. Um, and then I lost the internet for 48 hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's been an interesting couple, few days. So everything's back to normal again, hopefully, and we'll be able to go from there. So keep on making for Manny's Makings, and I'll see you at the next video where I show you how to make the chain. This is going to go through. Bye. Mm -hmm.